What does one say to an ancient Nephilim ghost? I suppose you start with... I'm not f***ing leaving! Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on YouTube? It's Filthy, and we're back with another video. Diablo 3 Season 30, this is going to be a level hack guide, how to get any class 270 in about an hour. You'll be able to do it faster on the Necromancer, because it's probably the best class for leveling, but I do think that even if you're not particularly skilled at the game like myself, a bit of a potato, I still think you can get there in about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. We're going to combine the Soul Shards with the Visions of Enmity, with the Altar of Rights to basically self-power level, and we're going to do that while saving our Challenge Rift Bag. Why do we want to save our Challenge Rift Bag? Well, we need it to unlock the full power of the Altar, so obviously if you want to do that, you can keep your Challenge Rift Bag and get your Staff of Herding, which is a grind, but you can get it done in the opening weekend for double primals and the full power of the Altar. Before we do get going though guys, as always thumbs up brightens my day uh, and I should just say the Altar of Rights of course has been nerfed into Season 30 even though it does return. So whether it's worthwhile going through this and saving your Challenge Rift Bag is of course up to you. If you pop your Challenge Rift Bag you'll be at 70 in no time because you'll help be able to skip uh, some of these steps that we're going to talk about. Right, let's get going. Now, normally speaking, at the start of a season, what you do is you make your level 1 character, back out the game, come along, do your challenge rift, beat it, and get your challenge rift back. And inside is blood shards, a few million gold, some of the bounty materials, and some death's breaths. And what it does is it allows you to roll shards at Kadala, and it allows you to do an upgrade of a weapon. Once you've trained Hadrid to level 70, he can craft a level 70 weapon. You then normally re-roll it at the Mystic, looking for the reduced level requirements. And that has always been how we've leveled for like the last bazillion seasons, um, with the exception of the season where the Altar of Rights was introduced, because it does change. Now obviously getting your hands on a level 70 item at level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, whatever, is going to be very, very powerful. So, we need to fully upgrade Hadrid. And to do that, we need 311,000 gold and one Death's Breath. Why do we need to fully upgrade him? Well, because if we can craft ourselves this two-handed, like let's say we go for Scythe, it's going to have huge damage on it, big stats. Now, because of the Altar of Rights, which is returning, we know that the second node unlock, so you unlock the first one, which is double kill streaks, and you unlock the second node, every item in the game has its level requirement taken off. So that means you can, if you can make a level 70 weapon, you can use it at whatever level you are. So we need 10 reusable parts, a flawless diamond or greater, 15 arcane dust, and another 20 reusable parts. This is going to be quite easy. And the reason it's going to be quite easy is because you can just simply take your follower's weapon, as per the max roll guide, and salvage it if you want for the first unlock, or simply just play the game a little bit and you'll get some reusable parts. Moving on to the second one, which is the Flawless Diamonds, you used to have to wait till level 18, do boss bounties, get two diamonds, and then use them at the jeweler to combine them to make a regular one, and then of course collect up your arcane dust and reusable parts, which again is no great shakes. But because soul shards return, when we salvage a soul shard, we know that we either get one of the big square max gems, or much more likely you can get three imperial gems of a random colour. Now obviously you do need diamonds, so you're going to have to do this process a few times, but you're going to salvage uh, some of the soul shards that you get. Hopefully speaking, eventually a diamond will be popping out. Now if you're really unlucky, you will be level 18 and you'll just have to find two diamonds, but this is quite a good little uh, hack to basically get some gems immediately. Now. What you're going to do is do on normal, just go and do a boss bounty straight away. So whether it's Magda or Zoltan Cool, and then just keep resetting the game and keep doing that until you basically get your diamond. That's what I'd do because the diamond will sell for a lot of cash or any of the gems will sell for cash. If you get a diamond you want to, and three Imperial diamonds, you want to split them. So you want to, let's say these three rubies here, we would take one, pop it in your stash if it's a diamond for the altar unlock, if it's a ruby, keep one of them for XP uh, to go in the helm. The rest of them you just simply go and sell at a vendor and that'll cover the gold cost for upgrading Hadrig. So you do need some soul shards to get that done. Now we will have the Darkening of Tristram event and a lot of people seem to remember that you could get all seven soul shards by going and killing the Butcher. Yes that is true but it's only on Torment 16 
uh, which we will not have access to. So I've had a little look at my uh, guide here from doing the Darkening Tristram back a couple of years ago. When we do actually manage to finally kill the Butcher here, he only drops one Soul Shard. So I would still go and do Zoltan Cool and Magda as boss bounties as the best way to getting the Soul Shards early on with a really low level character, simply because if you're their boss bounties, you're also going to get some gear. So there we go. We only got one Remnant of Pain. Because we're not going to play on Torment 6 immediately, that is kind of out. But what we can do, uh, whilst we're playing on normal, once we've got our Soul Shard and we've you know, broken it down, we've got our Diamond, we can then go and get the cube from Act uh, 3 Ruins of Sasharon. This is a good thing to go and do. As you go along, as you kill monsters, you will spawn a Vision of Enmity. You want to jump straight in that thing. You want to grab yourself a Death's Breath from killing an elite monster inside. It'd be really easy. You will definitely find one in there. And that's why you leave the game on normal, so you can get through it fast and efficiently. Once you've done that, once you've got your single solitary DB, leave the game. You'll be able to train Hadrig up to max rank with the Soul Shard Gold you've saved with the Death's Breath that you've just acquired from Envision of Enmity. And then you will be able, uh, hopefully, to craft a level 70 weapon. Now you might need some extra mats to do this, it depends how many you've collected along your way. You need 7 Veiled Crystals, 11 Arcane Dust and 11 Reusable Parts. So if you don't have that, you want to stay in that original Vision of Enmity to make sure you've got some materials. Again, they're very easy to find in there uh, and that will give you a level 70 weapon. Reset the game on Torment 6 and then what you're going to do is do the Masker Bonusing level as you normally do in the Temple of the Firstborn. Jumping into the Vision of Enmity as many times as you can because there's enhanced legendary drop rates. I'll put a clip in now for me leveling on Asia server in Season 29 when the Visions were first introduced, going through the bonkers amount of legendaries that we found. So this is the part of the video where I tell you about the Season 29 character I leveled on Asia without a challenge rift using the Visions of Enmity. Now, of course, for Season 30, as we say, we're going to have the ability to equip level 70 items at level 1 once we've unlocked the altar to that level, which is going to be very easy. I've just spent the you know last couple of hours leveling a character through the Visions of Enmity, and you can see the crazy amount of legendaries that we found on our Necro. We managed to complete the Compass Rose and Traveler's Pledge set, which is hilarious. We got a Nemesis Braces, which is quite funny got an XP ring, Leoric Signet obviously very helpful for levering. We got I think four or five Leoric crowns early. We got a funerary prick for a nice modifier. Uh, Corpse Whisper Pauldrons would be potentially very handy. Gold wrap, very handy. Uh, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and the follower, 32, 33, 34, 35 legendaries. Now, of course, if you're putting the game on Torment 6, you're not going to find this many legendaries, but you will be able to find some. And I think the combination of the Visions of Enmity and the Altar giving the level 70 items uh, the ability to use them at level 1 is just going to be insanely powerful. Like, I've managed to, without the challenge with bag upgrade a two-handed scythe we've still got 123 death's breath left i collected 72 greater rift keys over 50 of each bounty material i think having run through this i probably would prioritize picking up white items and then using the convert in the cube because we can do things like craft ourselves a sages set and stick it on at level one uh, which obviously the more level 70 pieces you have in your level one or level 20 30 40 50 60 character as you progress through leveling just the easier life is going to be for you so i think the strategy is going to be get a level 70 weapon of course then maybe move for a Sages set and you're going to bounce in and out of the Visions of Enmity as you look for materials to basically craft pieces and upgrade them. And once you've got three or four level 70 things, you should be Torment 6 capable the whole way. If you hang out in the Visions of Enmity rather than doing the cursed chest leveling, then you can get yourself keystones, bounty mats, uh, and just the chance of something nice legendary wise dropping. Uh, I did also extract three things into the cube again which is quite funny so we've got a corroded fang for extra damage which is brilliant the oryx we extracted one of them and wisdom of Kalan. so that's another three legendary items uh, that we found whilst leveling 
you can do this on any class you can make your necro and then once you get to level 70 you can then use your keys to run two rifts get the legacy of dreams gem chuck it to your main character you want to play let's say it's monk you're going to start off and collect the inner set as your starting set well you can use the blood shards you gained in your greater rifts to roll for the mystic ally boots stick the legacy dreams gem on in one of the jewelry pieces that has got a socket so make sure you try and collect up some kind of jewelry that has a socket uh, so like this like this ring if you don't have a legendary one save a yellow item bung it in and then the legacy of dreams gem will give you extra damage and damage reduction if you can find anything that has got plus xp on it as a secondary uh, that would be a massive help to solo leveling yourself of course a red gem in the helm of course the oryx crown in the cube if you get a goblin field in your visions of enmity you might get the canes plans or the borns plans so something like that you could craft for a bit more xp and then you should be able to t6 power level yourself pretty comfortably uh, to 70 so you can get to 70 on a necro probably in about an hour i'd say maybe a little bit less if you get good rng and know what you're doing maybe a little bit um longer if let's say you're newer to the necro or not too experienced then you just hop on to whichever class you want to do afterwards and power level yourself and then go and collect the altar now it might well be worthwhile just doing the season journey on lord necro and then collecting the bag on another character because with the legacy dreams gem necro gets a lot of power so many easy multipliers to stick together that we can build ourselves a t6 necro in level 70 torment 6 necro pretty comfortably uh, you would probably then be able to blast out the season journey and just go collect your bags on a power level yourself monk and then you get the inner set and then whoosh you are off to the races you've saved your challenge with bag for the altar of rights and that's all going to be gravy and yeah that's how you're going to get your hadrig trained up max level without the challenge of bag asap it's how you're going to put level 70 stuff on your character asap and it's how you're going to blast torment 6 uh, you know as much as you can now the visions of enmity are difficult there are multiple waves of boss enemies there are multiple waves of elite only floors so you don't play too high a level if you find you're not killing stuff efficiently drop it down to whether it's torment five four three whatever and then just keep playing to grab the resources that's in there and then you can always come to Hadrig and you can always make more than one level 70 thing you don't have to just stick to a weapon as you can afford it as you go you might say right well I'm going to do a level 70 belt it's ages I might do level 70 gloves again you can get goblin fields in there whilst you're leveling unlikely but you could hit a goblin field for tons of gems and all sorts of stuff so just build your character as you go it's going to be a lot of fun to level next season I've leveled twice or three times doing visions of enmity uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun because you don't know what the game's going to give you you're kind of like building a little character as you go i will fully test this method as soon as the season goes live in asia i'm hoping it'll maybe only take an hour to play through i'll try and upload that on season launch day for anybody in eu or the us so they can watch that vod and they can you know follow along and make sure that we do get this done but yeah Get yourself a soul shard ASAP, salvage it to unlock the altar fully and sell uh, some of the diamonds to get Hadrig trained up or some of the gems rather than diamonds and you should be able to blast your way to 70 very fast and very efficiently. Right, we still don't have a season date for season 30, maybe by the time this video comes out we do. Uh, I will see you again in the future for some more Diablo 3 content. Take it easy guys, peace.